right, so, um, my last video, I explained how they were selling right at the turning point, all right, so turning point, turning point trading, um, I'm going to give a really basic understanding of it, a very, very basic understanding of this style of trading, which, by the way, is 100% from the Wyckoff method because that's what I studied alright so anyway you go up here you go down here if it's in an uptrend it's the same thing up here down here if it's a sideways trend it's doing this alright down way downtrend whatever alright so now <coughs> the idea and I'm just gonna give an example Example is that you have an up wave and a down wave. So basically, structurally, you just there are only three things here: one, an up wave; two, a down wave. Right? And three. Is a turning point. So this is the up wave, that's the turning point, and that's the down wave. That, that's what you have. Now, what we want to do is compare it from the perspective of supply and demand during the up wave. Demand must be greater than supply. But what does this mean? This means that demand is absorbing supply. It's absorbing the supply. And the rotations here on the up wave are bigger than the down wave. That's the only way for price to go up. The, rota the, the uh, demand waves are bigger than supply waves. And demand must be absorbing supply. Buyers are absorbing uh, sellers okay similarly after the turning point supply must be greater than demand and what does that mean that means the waves um, down are bigger than the waves up it also means that supply must be absorbing demand in order for it to go down all right it, it that just has to has to occur so you know that these are f these are not uh um probabilistic this is these are facts all right these are facts only way price is going to go higher are the up waves have to be bigger than down waves and demand has to be absorbing supply and demand volume should be greater than supply unless it's you know effort reward and all that but you get the idea so these conditions hold now what's interesting about this is right at this point and I'm gonna show you real examples like this isn't some theoretical thing so I show real examples alright so just bear with me at the turning point, this condition must turn into this condition. That's what a turning point means. What is the turning point? The turning point is that the supply waves must be bigger, stronger than the demand waves. Supply should be absorbing. And demand should be weak. So these are the characteristics of the tur tur the turning point, which is what Wyckoff specialized in. Wyckoff specialized in the turning point when it came to trading. That is not my opinion. That is a fact that anybody who's read... Um, the second course, the second division of his course knows about. It's blatantly obvious. And he just says it 
right there. So that's that's what he's trying to catch. Okay. Now, what does that mean? In order for you to be able to catch, and this is why he said that, you know, your your training is only done if you can catch tops and bottoms. When he says, you know, um, the most desirable thing on Wall Street is to be able to catch, you know, the end of a bear market at the bottom of a um, bear market and at the top of a bull market, and that's the most desirable thing on Wall Street, etc., etc., the point is, you got to catch the, the, the top and the bottom are not just the top and the bottom, they're actually the turning points, all right? And there is, and uh, of, uh, there, this is what needs to be studied, this is what needs to be studied for Wyckoff style traders, it is the characteristics of price volume, time, activity, you know, I, that's um, um, what needs to be studied, but you can get a lot just with um, this price and volume. The activity, there's, there's a lot to say about that. Um, some folks think activity is just a tick chart. But it's more than that. Um, and uh, the time element, you know, the, the how, how the time element and the volume element are so very similar, but they're not the same. Because you can have a lot of time, but not a lot of volume. And anybody who's, you know, compared time overnight session to day session knows that you can't you, you can't use time interchangeably between those two sessions because the swings overnight have much more time etc etc so the point is we're just focusing there's i think there's one more variable but i'm not the i mean there is another variable it's basically support and resistance all right what wyckoff called support and pressure so these are the five one two three four five Support and resist, support and pressure is just, he basically coined the term support and pressure, pressure became resistance later, but that's a different story. Anyway, so the science right here is what needs to be studied. This is far more important than, uh, you know, looking at a candle pattern. Right, the the how how the market turns, this is something that requires a um, significant amount of skill. All right, how this is done, what are the elements of price and volume, what are the principles involved, and so on and so forth. So now enough talk. Let's get to a real example. So over here, uh, over here, <coughs> over here, where where that top is, there is heavy volume. Okay, like over here in the green and the and the red bar there is heavy volume all right now this is the top it's the top of a trend or the top of a swing or whatever that's the top now what we want to do is examine this top to see what occurred because telling you that very likely in like three three or four swings it's going to happen again and again again and again <coughs> again and again all right and then you want to really hone in on the behavioral characteristics of these tops and bottoms so here remember forget 99% of the teaching you 
this game is instead an inventory business, meaning they buy low, they sell high. They buy low, they sell relatively high, and when it pulls back, they're going to buy again. It's just that's the way the game works. And it is that simple. Like, it has to do with relative comparisons of what, what is high and what is low. I mean, obviously, I can't define that, but it's the idea is to buy low and sell high. And you can take prior swings and, you know, get a good idea of, like, the ranges and uh, determine what could be considered high and start looking looking for selling characteristics. But anyway, without getting into that, over here, you have high volume. Alright? This volume is very, very high. Now, notice that the price bars do, don't tell you anything. They're not telling you this is a high. They're not telling you. You have a red bar before that. That's it. So, what is inside the price bar, what is the content of that price bar, is what's important. And for that, you must be able to figure out a way to basically see if they're selling. If they're buying low and selling high, that's, that's it. Alright, now, I've devised a method, it really is not... Um, it I, I didn't really devise it, I just, like, whatever Wyckoff um, talked about in his course is just what I did, but I adapted it a bit for today's markets, because he did everything at a, you know, like every uh, one-eighth of a point or something like that, so I just modified it for markets that I want, and focusing only on um, on what I want, so anyway... So now, what happened up here? That's the question. What happened up here, and how is this a turning point? I'll tell you what happened up there. Now, you can use a footprint chart, or you can use any chart, but it needs to have volume at price. On that high, these dudes came in and sold 36,315 contracts. Okay? What was the average at that time? The average was 16,735. And I think it was actually much less than that. Because it's, uh, it's counting this um, value. But the point is, the, the, it's very heavy selling. That's it. At, at this area, you had 36,000 plus sold. And also note, there was also a climax there where there was, you know, they're selling on the up wave and the down wave, which is another discussion because how accum accumulation or distribution, it can happen on the up wave and the down wave, both of them. Both of them happen on the up wave and, and the down wave. All right, which means that volume by itself is... The, it's a scalar value. M what that means is um, direction doesn't matter. It is the magnitude that matters, meaning the actual value that matters. Because they, they will buy and sell in both directions. They, they will transfer the risk. and They will accumulate, distribute on the up bar and, as well as the down bar. So a lot of folks are just looking for a red bar not realizing that the, that the selling is occurring in a green bar. As you can see clearly in this case, selling is occurring on the green bar. So, in this little bar, you have 36,000 contracts traded. Alright, now how, how do I know that there's a high probability this is a top? I know that because I understand, you know, the length of the swing. I know, you know, from prior swings that they're usually about this size. And I see a green, green, green. I see a red bar before it. I, then I see the green bar. I realize there's no progress in the closes, if you see... 
blue, 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 blue. When multiple blues, that means there's no progress in the closes. Who does that mean? It means it's it's not making progress. It's not making progress because there is heavy selling. <coughs> so that's what happened. And I explained this as it was occurring. Not today, but on the, la and the uh, as it was occurring, I, exp I explained this. So I think I only had one bar or one or two bars at a time at that time like over here go to the last video you see it and I explained that there's heavy selling here it was uh, 36,315 because they're selling it's they're taking short positions that it, they could be, it could have been covering but that kind of selling other traders are going to join in and the market is just pulling back all right normal pull back at would would in my opinion would have would go at least here you know or at least here like in this zone because you figure it's about a 50% pull back so it went there so going back to the point the point is Number one, when you are trading, focus on the turning point for the Wyckoff method. All right, now there are other people who will focus on levels, zones, patterns, whatever it is. You know, it really, in my opinion, I've seen so much of this that everybody has a niche. So. You know, but they, you got to really understand the dynamics of what's going on in there. You know, if you get, for example, a lot of folks will focus on bull flags. Right? But they really know. They really know this pattern and what's going on in this pattern and what to look for. It's not just a rally and a reaction. They'll know based on, like, the pole of the bull flag, you know, the ease of movement in it, um, the pullback, the shallowness of the pullback, and et cetera, et cetera. So they know what they're trading. But from a white cough perspective, I'm, I'm only focusing on that. <laughs> the turning point and the behavioral characteristics of the turning point, which is linked to nothing more than buy low, sell high. This is the only pattern when, from what I from what I see and how to detect that and then when you detect it you know it goes up there's mm, turning you want to see the selling on that turn using the you use the wave chart along with like any type of footprint chart or any type of volume at price or something that is able to show you volume selling at levels and you see heavy 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 selling up here you know, and then um, join in for that pullback. A normal pullback is around 50%. It could be 30 something percent, or sometimes it's 68%. In general, from a white coat standpoint, you talk about halfway back. All right, I'm done. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.